work here. What's going on? Hey everybody, welcome to Treknologic, the podcast where we nitpick Star Trek episodes for your enjoyment. I'm Jeff, and you're listening to episode number one for May 1st, 2011. Hey, Chris. Hi, so we're actually going to do this thing? I think so. Episode number one, anyway. But you know what they say about episode number ones, right? Actually, I have no idea. They're all horrible. And if you're listening to episode number one, please stop. And go to our latest one, and then go backwards, because this one right here, it's, it's bound to be just terrible. Yeah, so let's shoot for going to 100. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's two years from now, Chris. <laughs> wow, that's a lofty goal. How about we shoot for number, let's shoot, let's shoot for number 35. Okay. And, and if, it's, if it's still fun, actually 35, that's, that's half a year. That's six months. Let's shoot for number 20. <laughs> You're thinking this isn't going to work for you, huh? Well, let's just see what happens. Let's shoot for number 20, and, and we'll, we'll assess the situation. And, of course, if you're a listener and you're listening to this many years from now, you'll know whether or not we made it past number 20. So, But we don't know that. Yeah, we're starting off on impulse. We are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, I, I think that's enough witty banter. Uh, let's get into the news. Okay. All right. Well, William Campbell passed away on uh, April 28th. So do you know who that is? Oh, yeah. I know uh, he was Trelane. Yeah, I knew that one. Who, who's the other person he was? Captain Culloth from The Trouble with Tribbles. Oh, wow. I did not know that one. Yeah. Yeah, he played two characters. I. Uh, it was pretty sad, his passing, because The Squire of Gothos was kind of one of those episodes that really wasn't considered one of the great episodes, but I, I really liked it. I thought Trelane was great. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not not entirely sure if I could agree with you on that, that being one of the great episodes of Star Trek. No, it was not one of the great episodes, but it was kind of like um, a gem in the rough kind of thing. I kind of liked them. And then, of course, some people speculate that Trelane was a member of the Q. Yeah, no, I li- I'll go along with that. Cool. Well, anyway, that's probably a, a good idea to kind of link it in with the next generation. Yes. All right. What else do we have? We have uh, two new board games coming up. There's a, uh, let's see, a Monopoly Klingon Collectors Edition. Yeah, I don't know okay. about that. Um, do you know anything about that one? Uh, I saw a picture of it, and you know, the, the Monopoly they come out with a different edition like every other month, and I'm I'm not sure about this one. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Monopoly. Yeah, that's really it. I mean, I have I have some of them because I do like the little pewter figures. Those are kind of neat. But right. Monopoly, Monopoly, I, I haven't played that one in a good long time. So. All right, and then there's Star Trek Expeditions, uh, which is a cooperative game. What about that? Well, you had you're the one that uh, you had sent me an email about this one, and it looks kind of interesting. I, it, Apparently, it uses the Hero Clicks system. Do you know what that is? Uh, my boys do. I haven't played it. Do, do they like but it? It's... Oh, hold on just a second. My <laughs> wife is sending me a secret note here. Oh, excellent. Clean on Monopoly. Wait, wait. Don't you just beat people up and take their money? Oh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> See, she should be on this podcast as the person who you know is only vaguely familiar with Star Trek. <laughs> Um, I would funny one. I would love to have Carrie on this podcast. There's okay. no doubt about that. Well, go ahead and send a formal invite. Because <laughs> <laughs> that would be very funny. And she may be right about uh, Monopoly. That might make it a little more interesting. Yeah, maybe they've uh, added some <laughs> different rules for that. Um, the Star Trek Expeditions thing, I, I'm, I'm interested in it. Apparently, it was created by someone who won some awards. Okay. Um do you think we can get our gaming group to play it or probably not? I think we can. And, you know, the part that I like is the cooperative aspect of the game. That's a good point. That That is, I do love cooperative games also. So that that, that should be uh, intriguing. I mean, I've seen them fail and I, I've seen the seen good cooperative games, but uh, I don't know how this will be. I have Again, I haven't done the hero clicks, but I'm sure the boys will be excited. Okay, yeah, there's a uh, 
interview with uh, Billy Blackburn. Yeah, do you know who he is? Uh, yes, he was. Uh, uh, let's see. I, you know, I had read that, but uh, I, I can't remember what it was. He was like on the um, Lieutenant Hadley. Yeah, he was on the bridge. That you know, some yes. guy that just never really did much. You know what? I I had when I saw his picture, I remembered who he was. I, I can't tell you that I knew what his name was or anything, but it was right. kind of the article is interesting. Did you read the article? Uh, yes, uh, he played the White Rabbit in Shore Leave. Yeah, and he's claustrophobic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I read that. He's kind of a jack of all trades. He was there. He was just kind of was took any old when they needed an extra. He's who they grabbed. Well, I like the fact that he became successful. What uh, What did he do? I missed that part. Uh, he became a customer, and he be, you know ended up running the whole department, or you know, uh, a large part of the department for Warner Brothers. Oh wow. I thought I, that's great. It was a pretty yeah. inter, it was a pretty interesting article, and I had read a, another article about a guy. There was another guy in the Next Generation. I don't know what his name was, and he was kind of like that. Apparently, you can see him walking around the halls during the episodes. So, I guess they employ these jack of all trades guys for the shows. Well, back in the '60s, yeah. So what we got is a uh, Next Generation dustbuster. Apparently, is this correct? Is this real? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just um, see the link you sent me, and uh, yeah. is this a dustbuster or is this an actual prop they have for sale? Okay, this is an actual prop, and if you remember from the very early episodes of Next Generation, uh, they had these goofy-looking phasers, and they looked like dustbusters because they were big, right. and apparently they they made them out of balsa wood, and one of them's for sale. So this was just kind of an early prototype thing. And this comes, by the way, this comes to us from trekauction.blogspot.com. But uh, I thought it's kind of interesting that people would pay money for these things. <laughs> you know, I'd like to be able to collect props. I don't, I don't make enough money for that. But uh, this is probably one that I would not want to have. <laughs> no. Uh, some, <laughs> some now that I'm looking at the picture of it, it looks like there's you know electrical tape and stuff on it. It's... Uh, <laughs> Right. Well, it's kind of interesting. It's like that blue part. It's like someone just got some paint and just kind right. of <laughs> kind of painted in there. So uh, it's still kind of interesting. Um, are you, and they got that nice picture of Wharf there. So yeah, it looks like somebody just needed a phaser in a hurry, and someone whipped one off real quick. All right. Well, let me know if you get that one. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I sure will. I, I was actually looking at some of those pads. Those were kind of cool. They have all kinds of different pads, like the Romulan ones and uh, different Cardassian and Bajoran. Um, kind of like uh, what they have now for the Apple iPad. Yeah, that's true. Well, they originally called pads on the um, original Star Trek. Right. And there was a uh, clipboard. P A B D E S, if I remember correctly. Oh, it did it? The, the big one yeah. with the one light in the middle? Yeah, I know, that you never saw writing on or right. anything. Right, he had a um, pen, he'd pick up the pen, he'd sign something. Yeah, here we go, let's see, I'll take a look here. Uh, it's an acronym for Personal Access Display Device. Oh, where did you find that? Very nice. Oh, that was on Memory Alpha. Uh, very good. <laughs> and I see uh, we yeah, have... He was called a pad, and it's like, wow, you know, he, that one was thinking ahead. Uh, and it, it looks like we have some birthdays. Oh, we do. Uh, Kate Mulgrew was uh, born on April 29th, 1955. So she's older than me. 1955. And, uh, so how old is she? She's um, 50. Is she 55? Six. She's 56 now. Wow. And uh, Michael Ansara was born on April 15th, 1922. Who is he? That's Kang from Day of the Dove. Oh, okay. And he's, Kang. And yeah. he's still alive. Yeah, is he still doing conventions? So he's 90. I don't know. I don't know if he is. But that was a pretty good episode, Day of the Dove. And George Takai, he was born April 20th, 1937. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's still in it. He's still doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, he's very active. And I'm I'm kind of disgusted that I'm not sure that I knew that I shared my birthday with George Takai. And that's kind of weird. But uh, now I know and I'll remember. <laughs> and you're disgusted by it? Well, you would think that I would have known that we shared the same birthday. Oh, I see what you're yeah. talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that does. <laughs> I thought you were disgusted by George Takai. 
No, I, I like Sulu, so... <laughs> He, he's a, he's a pretty good guy. He's pretty funny. Yeah, he is. In fact, actually, um, I I saw him at a convention. I saw him speak at a convention one time, one of the Star Trek conventions I went to, and he was funny. Yeah. And right. oh, look, we do have another piece of news. I see. Oh yeah, it's on on a different line here. Um, oh, well, apparently the Star Trek uh, the Star Trek Two or whatever they're going to call it is still on target. Yeah. How did you like Star Trek One? Uh, I liked the characters, but the the plot was uh, bizarre and didn't make any sense. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty conflicted. I watched it again the other day. Um, Jonah, my son, uh, he's eight, of course, and and he really liked it. So maybe for this next generation of of uh, Trekkies, it, it'll be okay. But I didn't like how they changed the timeline. I didn't mind the changing the timeline. Oh, they destroyed Vulcan. I didn't, I didn't like well, that. that. I mean, we'll see how that plays out. I don't. I don't think that was such a big deal, though. Um, I mean, to me, the main deal was about the uh, getting the characterizations correct, and I thought they nailed those pretty well. Yeah, that's true. And Simon Pegg was a pretty funny Scotty. He did good. And um, when Chekhov was was trying to read and he couldn't pronounce the V's, uh, my wife Patty, she was in stitches on that. So, uh, oh, I didn't even know she attended. So uh, you know, I, I thought she wasn't that uh, that into Trek. She does not really like Trek. No, <laughs> she endures Trek. I had it on. Oh, and, she endures it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she endures it. Is Carrie? Is she pretty similar to that? Just kind of endures it. Uh, no, she's okay with it. Oh, okay. But it's, I don't think it's an endurance session. But uh, <laughs> uh, she'll watch. Okay. Well, um, I guess that's our news. Yes. Yep. Um, so, what do we have next? We have. I guess we're well. We're done. Yeah, for scientific <laughs> method, I, I have not watched it. Uh, I have seen it, but uh, going on uh, memory from a long time ago. No, well, you know, twelve, thirteen years ago is uh, a little rough. Yeah. Well, what we'll do is I'll just I've got the clips, so we'll save them. All right, Chris. So it seems as if we did not finish recording our episode. Well, you know, we just don't have anything in our heads. Well, I'll just tell you what. We'll just record this little bit here, and I'll append it to the end of the episode, and everything will be good. Sounds like a good idea. And no what, one will ever know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you think of episode number one? Um, I thought it was rough, but it was a good start, I guess. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, some of my math didn't add up, and some of my sentences didn't make much sense. But other than that, <laughs> I think we did a good job. All right. Well, let's focus on grammar next time. Yes. So uh, please visit us at www.starbasehouston.com. And if you want to contact me, my email is jeff at starbasehouston.com. And I'm a Twitter at P2J2. And you can contact me at chris at starbasehouston.com. And other than that, I think that's the wrap. All right. Join us next time where we're going to review Scientific Method, uh, Season 4 Voyager episode. Thanks and bye. Bye now.